Good morning, and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living Sarasota. Whether you're a member, a regular attendee, or you've just found us, we want you to know that we're here to support you in finding a personal relationship with the God of your understanding and in discovering what you already know. My name is Jim Grove, a licensed spiritual practitioner here at the center, and I greet you with Namaste. Namaste is Sanskrit and means the divinity in me recognizes and honors the divinity in you. Let's begin by affirming our vision and mission statements. The words can be seen on your screen. Please feel free to read aloud with me. First, our vision. Empowering spiritual growth as a loving, inclusive worldwide community. And now our mission. We teach science of mind principles and other life-affirming spiritual truths. We explore, we learn, we grow, we connect, honoring all paths to God. We offer in-person and online weekly services, classes, workshops, affirmative prayer support, and other spiritual tools. We create opportunities for joyful social connection, community outreach, and service. And we celebrate the awakening of our innate spiritual magnificence. As we prepare for our time of prayer and meditation, I invite you to relax, close your eyes, take a deep cleansing breath, and go within as Fawny Frost and Bob Teasdale set the tone for us with a chant entitled, There is Only Love. Sets us free. 
Join me in this meditation inspired by the founder of our philosophy, Ernest Holmes. Since happiness is the reason for my being, and since the kingdom of heaven is a joyous state of consciousness, and since the kingdom of heaven is here and now, today I consciously open my whole thought to the influx of wonder in the divine harmony. Today, I realize that I am not a stranger on the shores of time, but I am an honored guest in the kingdom of good. Today, I enter with joy and wonder into my kingdom, into the warmth and color of living. Today, I enter into the peace and the calm and poise that belong to the kingdom of good, which is the kingdom of God. Today, I say to myself, Behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. This kingdom is my kingdom. My kingdom is here and now. My host, which is God, sits beside me, walks with me, gives me wise counsel. My host advises and gently leads me down the corridors of time till all shadows are cast behind and the golden rays of peace flood my whole being with eternal light. Today, I will recognize the wonder of the divine in everything. I will realize that the ground upon which my feet tread is holy. The voice of truth will rise from every form in nature, proclaiming the holiness, the wholeness of all that is. The sun will represent the warmth and color of the infinite. Not only will the morning stars sing together, but I will chant my hymn of praise, and with them I will rejoice in the wonder of all nature. And so it is. Our spiritual leader, Reverend Karen Wolfson, is with us this morning. Her message is entitled, The Wonder of Questioning Everything. After Reverend Karen's message, I'll have some announcements, including exciting news about a new class we'll be offering in February that you won't want to miss. But before we hear from Reverend Karen, Fawnie and Bob are back to sing, I Don't Need to Know. Welcome, Fawnie and Bob. When things go wrong, it's natural to wonder what's the last rule that I break. When things go right. It's logical to ponder What credit can I take But the truth is so much easier I don't need a master plan I can live here in the moment Cause my life is in
Yes, I'm still craving control. Still I fly. I'm afraid of taking chances. As if I could damage my soul. But at this moment. Thank you. Thank you, Fawny and Bob. I don't need to know. I don't need to know, really? In this information age, the age of going to the internet and Googling every time we have a question, seems we're in a collective frenzy to have all the answers. And it seems seriously contradictory to say, as the song said, I don't need to know what the future holds. I need, I need never know how pain ends, how my heart mends. I can just let go because God knows. Oh, oh, but it goes on to say, still I find I'm crying out for answers. Guess I'm still craving control. But at this moment, it comes so clear to me that the minute I surrender... I'm as safe as I could be. I don't need to know. Why? Because God knows. So my theme for this month is wonder. Now, the first week was living everyday wonder and being aware of the wonder in the smallest of things. Week two, wonder, wonder everywhere, including the wonder of the interconnectedness of everyone and everything, of all of life, of oneness. And then week three, embrace the wonder of the now while also being open to possibilities, realizing the wonder of living each moment because each now moment is infinite. Now today my message is about the wonder of questioning everything. And so you can see why I asked Bob and Fawny to do that song of I don't need to know. But first, let's check in with each other. And I want to give a special shout out and heartfelt thanks to you who have answered our recent invitation and declared your 2022 membership in this center, your spiritual home. By doing this, you have let us know that you're committed to your own spiritual growth through the principles of science of mind and that you are an active part 
of our positive impact in the world. And special thanks to those of you who also included an annual financial pledge with your membership. That demonstrates your dedication and your commitment to participate in the life and work of Center for Spiritual Living Sarasota. So thank you and welcome to 2022 and all that we're going to explore together. And to all of you watching today, here we are in a brand new year. I am so happy knowing you're still out there. I, dare I say, it is a wonder that you're there. And I wonder, how are you doing? What are your hopes and plans for 2022? Let's do stay in touch this, this year as it unfolds. And know that I affirm for you a year of purpose, peace, joy, and wonder. And to your team of financial contributors, you too are a wonder. Thank you. Thank you. You are an absolutely essential part of all that makes it possible for us to share our message, to share our caring and our connection. Oh, bless you and thank you. Now, one more thing. Many of you have been asking when we will be meeting in person and if we will be meeting in person. Well, so much is unknown yet, but I can tell you this. This month, your Center for Spiritual Living Sarasota Board of Trustees and Practitioners are visioning about this, opening our hearts and our minds to divine guidance and ideas. And while in the visioning process, of course, we'll certainly be open to ideas and possibilities, to the wonder guided by our visioning. So stay tuned. Today, the wonder of questioning everything. But wait, what about that song? I, this is, I don't need to know. Well, if you notice, the song did not say, don't ask questions, just that we don't necessarily need all the answers. In fact, as author Jacqueline Winspear writes, truth walks toward us on the paths of our questions. She goes on to say, as soon as you think you have the answer, you've closed the path and may miss the vital new information. So wait a while in the stillness and do not rush to conclusions, no matter how uncomfortable the unknowing. You know, as humans, we're wired to question. Questions do pull us forward to discover, to create, and to solve. They're like a hook. In fact, a question mark looks like an upside down hook, doesn't it? But you might think as a person on the spiritual path of faith and trust, is it appropriate to then question, question everything? Actually, it is a powerful and rich spiritual practice, but not in the way you might think. Alfred Lord Tennyson wrote this. He said, there lives more faith in honest doubt, and I'll say questioning, than in half the creeds. Wow. <laughs> now, more about that in a moment. But first, Think about all the questions on your mind today. Questions where, of course, you're looking for answers. You seek information or questions about a decision to make or questions about a troubling problem. And you might be facing a daunting and even frightening life challenge that raises so many questions. And if that's the case, know that my heart is with you and that this message is in no way intended to diminish the anguish or the importance of those questions, but it's intended to offer a safe and sacred spaciousness for those questions and for you. And now, since we're on the subject of wonder this month, how about changing our terminology from questioning to the wonder of wondering about everything? I like the feeling that that evokes. It opens me up in a way that maybe questioning often doesn't. Thomas Carlyle wrote, the individual who cannot wonder is but a pair of spectacles behind which there is no eye. <laughs> so the wonder of questioning everything, questioning our assumptions, our beliefs, our judgments, <laughs> our fears, and of course our stories. Now, the philosopher Bertrand Russell wrote, in all affairs, 
It's a healthy thing now and then to hang a question mark on the things you've long taken for granted. Hmm. Well, personally, here's my story. In my early religious conditioning, questioning was considered antithetical to faith. In fact, questioning and doubt were regarded as temptations from the devil to lure us away from God. And then in my college years, I did a 180 and I questioned everything, as you, you probably did too. And philosophy courses certainly encouraged that, and it was a good thing. But then I found myself so discouraged because my questions only led to bigger and bigger questions. And then I concluded that everything is relative, there's no real answer, and there's no absolute meaning to life, certainly not to my life. And at that juncture, of course, I was despairing. My paradigm was, uh, at that time, was that the sole purpose of questions was to find answers. And then many years later, as I embarked on this path of ministry, Initially, I was thrilled to have found answers to so many of those questions, or so I thought, and had to do some reconciling again. And here is an affirmation that was a bridge for me. It still is, between knowing and not knowing. It is this, I don't know, but something in me does know. Or as the author Erica Jong said, Advice is what we ask for when we already know the answer, but wish we didn't. I don't know, but something in me does know. And now I've discovered, as I've continued studying, learning, evolving, and experiencing life, sometimes really agonizing lows, as well as ecstatic highs, I now have more and more questions and fewer answers. But... Better yet, I'm increasingly okay with this state of questions, questions with or without answers, and simply with the wonder of wondering. And this is where I love the words of poet Rainer Rilke, expressing it so elegantly. Be patient with all that is unresolved in your heart and try to love the questions themselves. Live the questions now, and perhaps without knowing it, you will live along someday into the answers. I discovered also that God, by whatever name, and God could be a noun, a verb, it's infinite in nature, it's beyond all of that. This presence is not diminished by my questions or even by my doubts or my wondering. As I was thinking about this, I thought, hey, how about another name for God? Wonder. Sue Monk Kidd writes a lot of, of things that, that really speak to me. And she asks this. She says, how did we ever get the idea that God would supply us with quick fixes on demand? That God is merely a rescuer and not a midwife? Think about that. God is a midwife. Well, I know my wondering process does not invalidate my spiritual experience. In fact, it enriches it. And here is how some wise spiritual teachers have expressed this. A Christian monk named Father Sylvan, he said this simply, questions by themselves teach. The growth of a person's soul is activated when we experience the pain of contradiction or the sustained state of questioning. Groping and searching is the way our deeper self evolves and is released. Mm. That is so encouraging. And again from Sue Monk Kidd, she said, Many of the questions I have lived with began to sprout little seeds of insight. It was as if I discovered a new room inside myself, a wider, more expansive place than I'd known before, but a room that had been there all along. I can say that's been my experience too, those little sprouts of insight. Now here's something to think about. Ultimately behind every question or wondering is a divine creative impulse. 
And get this, it's the same creative impulse and process that created and sustains the universe and beyond. Thomas Troward, one of our early New Thought writers and teachers, said this, The singular impulse of this creative process is that of a greater and greater experience of aliveness. That's where it's going. That's where it's taking us. This is the animating energy behind and through the activity of your mind, always urging you forward toward what Troward calls the divine ideal. And what is that? The divine ideal is to be an individuality that recognizes its source of unending creative expression, life, aliveness. Another way to say this is behind our wondering is the impulse to know God, by whatever name, to know our divine essence, to know more and more of our aliveness. Just for fun, try following the thread of any question you have, any question at all. Could be mundane or could be one of the big life questions. Follow the thread of it, the question you have, the wonder, the thing you're curious about, and notice that as you follow that thread, The ultimate destination is an urge to more aliveness, more expression of you. Now, who doesn't want that? (laughs) The wonder of wondering. It's a God thing. So recognizing this, my questions and my wondering, give me a sense of spaciousness and vitality. There's a book by Mary O'Malley called What's in the Way is the Way. I love that title. You could say the question is not in the way, it is the way. And she writes, there is a vast intelligence that runs through all of nature, all of life. I call it presence. It is always with you. In fact, you already have a relationship with it. You just may not notice it. It's always speaking to you, but you often don't hear it. Because of the voice of your because the voice of your storyteller is so loud, oh yes. She goes on to say, I have discovered a way to be in relationship with presence is to ask questions without looking for an answer. This may seem strange at first, because you're so used to asking questions and then trying to figure out the answer. Instead, she says you can go directly to the intelligence at the heart of life. To ask a question and then let it go is one of the most powerful tools you can learn on this journey. The power of a question isn't in the answer, it is in the question itself. Hmm. And I'll take this further. In some deep way, the direct, immediate answer is not important. What is important is to simply ask a question and then allow the question to work its magic from underneath your everyday awareness. Why is this so powerful? Well, when you ask a question, but don't demand an answer, you're creating a space inside where the intelligence of all life can be heard and expressed. Now, here's a simple example. You're trying to remember someone's name. You're at a party and someone you're talking to someone and you, you want to remember their name and you can't remember it. And then, a little bit later, when you're really not thinking about it all that much, except uh, having left that question dangling in your, in your mind, that name pops up. It's kind of like that. Take the courageous step of knowing that life is smarter than you and it knows what it knows, knows what it is doing. It has been orchestrating the dance of life for billions of years. And then be willing to listen. Because life is talking to you all the time. It's summed up in these words by Ernest Holmes, the architect of our teaching. Every problem contains its own answer. Think of the problem merely as a question, an inquiry, and not as an obstruction. Keep your mind not on the repetitions of thoughts about the problem, but on the receipt of the answer. The spirit within me knows the answer to any problem, any question which confronts me. 
I know the answer to my problem, my question, is here and now within my own mind because God is right where I am. And now Fonnie and Bob are going to send us into our week with a song that says it all, sums it up so simply, the song by Eddie Watkins, Jr., God is the Answer. So enjoy this week. Enjoy the wonder of wondering, of questioning everything. And I'll see you soon. Karen for your beautiful message about questioning the wonder all around us, and Fawny and Bob for your reminder that God is the answer to any question we may have. Now, as we move into our time of offering, I want to let you know that here at the Center for Spiritual Living Sarasota, we're available to support you in knowing the power and presence of your spiritual essence. We offer prayer support, inspiration, encouragement, and opportunities for virtual community and connection. And we're so grateful for your generous financial support of this center that allows us to support you. There are three easy ways to share your offering. On your screen, you'll see our website, which is www.cslsarasota.com, where you can choose a couple of options. You can select the Donate button, which allows you to contribute via PayPal or by credit card or you can mail a check to our address. You can also set up automatic contributions through your own online banking. 
And now I invite you to place your hand over your heart as you reflect on your gift, blessing it as you share it, and know this with me. My gift goes forth to heal, to bless, and to prosper, and the divine flow returns it to me, multiplied abundantly. abundantly. Now, please join me in our offering affirmation on your screen. I give thanks that I may share of my good, my love, and my support. Thank you so much. Do you need prayer support? I'd like to draw your attention to the green prayer request button. We invite you to use this feature to send us your request. Our five licensed spiritual practitioners, Kathleen Frankert, Ron Frost, Nicole Leeds, Sean Scanlon, and me are available to know and affirm spiritual truth with and for you in whatever challenge you may be experiencing. We're also available for one hour spiritual coaching sessions by appointment. These sessions offer the opportunity to explore a deeper understanding and practical application of the spiritual truth that transcends your problem or challenge. For more information, check our website under the staff link at the left side of the screen and then select practitioners. Here on our website, you can also sign up to receive our weekly email newsletter. Please also check out our Facebook page for posts about upcoming events. As I mentioned earlier, I have a couple of announcements for you this morning. First, Kathleen Franker, one of our spiritual practitioners and teacher extraordinaire, will be presenting a 10-week class entitled Exploring the Roots of Science of Mind. This class will be held via Zoom each Tuesday evening from 6 to 9 p.m., beginning February 8th and running through April 12th. The tuition is $340 and includes a PDF version of the course workbook. Please contact Kathleen at the phone number or email address on the screen for more information or to register. The registration deadline is February 5th. I took this course as part of my practitioner training, and I highly recommend it, especially if you're interested in finding out more about the origins of new thought and those who influenced Ernest Holmes in the development of the science of mind philosophy. Finally, our spiritual living circle meets via Zoom every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. to discuss an article from the current month's Science of Mind magazine. This week, we'll be discussing the article by Jeffrey Ryan in the January issue entitled Living Everyday Wonder. This is a wonderful no-cost opportunity for spiritual development and social connection with other like-minded individuals. If you'd like to participate, please email me at the address shown on your screen, and I'll send you the Zoom link, article, and discussion guide. Now, as we conclude this sacred time together, let us move forward to the week ahead, making a conscious choice to embrace the wonder all around us. I invite you to listen or join in singing our closing song, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Thank you for being with us and have a great week, everyone. Let this be my soul. 